So in the previous video, I introduced what these boxes represent, that the left-hand box means the early event time, and the right-hand box is the late event time. And we now have uh, the activities on our arcs with their durations, so how long they take to complete. So what we want to do, the end goal here, is to figure out what is the earliest time that we can complete this project? Okay, that's what we want to do. So, what we do, first of all, is what's referred to as the forward pass. The forward pass allows us to fill in all of the left-hand boxes. So, we're going to start off here at the source. And we start off with zero. Okay, now... We start off with zero because at this event, um, the earliest time we can start there is at zero. Okay, zero time has elapsed. So let's look at this one first. So there's only one arrow going into this event, and that's A. So the earliest time that I can get to this event is at two. Okay, because two hours have elapsed. Now. As for this one, there's only one arrow going into that one, so I can go, right, well, the earliest time I can get there is 7. Okay? Now, how about this one? Now, there are two routes coming in. There's this one and this one. Now, of course, because this is a dummy activity, they carry zero duration. Okay? So, we've got 2 plus 3 is 5. Or we've got 7 plus 0 is 7. So we've either got 5 or 7 going here. Now, at this point, at this event, I'm going to say that F can start after that. Okay, F requires D and it requires B. Now, I can't start this at 5. I can't start F at 5 because if I start F at 5, B hasn't been completed yet. So when there is a choice on the left-hand box, you must take the larger of the choices. So we've got 5 or 7. So it can start at 7. That's the earliest I can start in order for all of the previous um, activities to be completed. So how about this one up here? Well, I've got 2 plus 4, so 6. That's the only arrow going in there, so I only need to consider that one root. And now for our final box here, we've got 6 plus 2 is 8, 7 plus 4 is 11, or 7 plus 1 is 8. So it's either 8 or 11. But as we saw with this box, we chose the larger. So this should be 11. Okay, so that's the earliest I can reach that node. So the late event time is the same. Okay, so when you get to your final node, the early and event time, early late event time should be the same. So now I've done the forward pass, I'm now going to do the backward pass, filling in all the right hand boxes. So we've got 11, then take away 2 gets me to 9. OK, so what that's telling me is that C could finish by 9 at the latest in order for E to be completed in the time, OK, without the whole project overrunning. Now, let's go with, well, I can't do, um, can I do this box? I can do this box. Let's do this box. Uh, 11 take away 4 is 7. So that will go there, because that's the only route back into that box. Uh, I couldn't have done this one first uh, before I'd done that one, because there was another route, because I've got two routes going back into this one. So I, I can do it now, because I've got 7 take away 0 is 7, or 11 take away 1 is 10. Now, which one should I pick? Well, when you're going in the reverse direction, rather than picking the larger of the two, you should pick the smaller of the two. So 7 take away 0 is 7, 11 take away 1 is 10, so this should be 7. So for this one, 
We've got 9 take away 4 is 5, or 7 take away 3 is 4. So this one would need to be 4. Okay. Right. Okay. So then for this one, we've got 7 take away 7, or 4 take away 2. So 0. So you should always find that for your start node, it should always be 0, 0. And the end node should be the shortest uh, time that it takes to, well, the time required to complete the project in both of those boxes. Okay? So that is how we complete the forward and backward paths through an activity network.